again, it's Mark here from GrimtreeGames.com, online game store and blog. And today we're going to do a game overview of Guild Hall from AEG Games. Um, uh, it's a card game, as AEG are known for at this moment in time. Super simple card game, very simple rules, but lots of complexity, which is good. So, I've got it set up, we'll do a couple of hands and I'll show you how it plays. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you start off, you take, I just took the rules, which is a bit bad, so nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, I hope these have been shuffled after our last play because they arrange themselves into sets at the end, so if not, I'll have to shuffle them in a minute. Anyway, nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Super. So we'll have a two hand example. So what you do to begin with is you look at your nine cards. I'll put them down here so you can see them. And there are a number of professions and colours. And the aim of the game is to uh, collect chapters, um, which are basically the same profession in all five different colours. So that's my starting hand there. What I do is I can ditch as many cards as I want and draw back up to nine. So if you have a bit of a, a dodgy hand, you can do that. But that looks okay, there's a good mix there. Um, I think I will stick with that. Okay. So, then what you do, so that you, your nine cards, is you take three of them, and you put them down to form chapters. So, uh, so let's see, you will go for anything that I've got a couple of might be a good idea. So we'll have a weaver, it all makes sense, don't worry. A weaver, a trader, and an assassin, for example, just as a rough. Okay. And for for our player two here, I'll just throw some cards down as a as an example. That'll do. Right. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll have a few turns so you can see how it plays. So the, the whole objective is is to, like I say, each chapter is a profession and you need to get five, each colour, five cards in that chapter. Uh, you then flip it over and you can score it. When you score it, it means you get victory points. First person to 20 victory points wins the game. Super simple. So, I'm going to start with this imaginary player. So he's got those cards there. Um, on your turn, you can do two things. Um, so you've got two actions. With each action, you can either play a card from your hand, um, discard any number of cards from your hand, and pull back up to nine. Sorry, six. Um, or, if you have a completed chapter, exchange it for victory points. So you can do any one of those things twice. So for example, I'm going to go mm -mm -mm, assassin. Now, there's a few rules to this. I can't play a card that I already have um, up here. So there's no duplicates. It will make sense in a minute as to why that is. So I'm going to put a card down there in my play area, assassin. And what we do is once I put it down, we then look at those magical symbols at the bottom of the card. It will all become clear. So, all these numbers here say um, whatever I already have in the however many cards I already have in the assassin chapter, I can do whatever's on that line. So, if I had four assassins already down, I could do that line. If I had two already down, I could do that line. But because um, I've only got one down, I can't do the two, but I can do the none because it's, um, I, I've, it's actually less than I've already got. So, it says black house, which means. Uh, an enemy chapter, one card, uh, put into the discard pile. So, let's do that. Let's come over here. So, sneakily. Now, you've seen that this player, what he's done is when he got his, his, his three cards, he picked two cards that was the same profession, which meant that you stacked them like this to form a chapter. Now, this assassin can take one of these cards and put it in the discard pile. So, because he's already got two of these, which I don't like, I'm going to take that, put it in the discard pile, and there we go. So, I'm going to do another card. Now at this point I've got two actions, that's my first action. I could 
Um, if I wanted to discard some cards and pick up as my second action, or if I had a completed chapter, I could get some victory points. But I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to pick another card and I'm going to play it. So, let's see, what could we do? So I'm going to go for a weaver. I'll show you a weaver. Put a weaver down in the play area. So this is where you put the cards as they're being played. So a weaver says, um, I've already got one weaver down, but that does no good for me. So from my hand, I can take one card and put it into one of my chapters. Okay. So I'm going to then look at my hand and any card I can put down there we go, so I'm going to put that down there, super duper. I can't do any of the actions on that, it's just that that has allowed me to place it, but I can't do anything that's on the card. So, end of my turn, anything that's in the play area, then comes up to join their companions in the chapters. Like that. Super duper. And that's it, that's the turn. Um, all the cards that you will see... Um, we'll go through. We'll go through all the chapters, I think, briefly, because it's quite important. Because these symbols are very good. It means that there's no sort of language barrier. You can, you can see the symbol, and in one line, it explains what we'll probably take a paragraph to say. So the symbols are good. We like the symbols, but it would be handy for you to see what all the professions do. So I'll show you whether you like it or not. So come down here. So we've already seen the assassin. The, the, the more cards, the more assassins you already have down here, um, the better it is, to the point where you can send two uh, cards from the enemy's chapter to the, um, to the graveyard, which is good. Traders are a bit of a tricky one, really. Um, if you put a trader down and you've got none down, you can swap a card between your enemy's chapter and your chapter. Sometimes it's hard to do that without actually helping the other chapter out, but tactically sometimes it can be very good. You don't have to do this by the way. If you put it down and you don't want to do an action, then you can choose not to. If you have two traders down, then you can do two cards. If you have four traders down, you can swap an entire chapter. So I could take my one chapter with one card that's rubbish, and then grab somebody's with lots more cards in, which is very good. Weaver. Um, again, so you've seen that um, one card for straight from your hand into your chapter two cards from your hand into your chapter, but you've got to pull a card back from one of your chapters. Um, and four is as many cards as you want, but you've got to pull two back. So that's good. Moves are good. Historians um, pull the top card from the discard pile and put it back into the chapter. You can use that quite tactically, actually. If you've seen that, if you can, if you've seen that a card has gone down, this is a good time to play it. Um, look through the deck. Pull a card from the, uh, sorry, look through the discard pile, pull a card, and it goes straight into your chapter. Same again, but two. Very good. Let's have a look at some of the other ones. Farmers. So these victory points here, this is the only time you'll, you'll get these victory points using these cards. You get these little tokens. So if I played this and I already had a farmer down, I get a victory point, which adds towards my total of 20 to win. If I had three down, I get two. Oh, calamity. Two victory points. So, farmers are good. Farmers are a good way of, of racking up quick victory points. Dancers, however many are already down in, in the chapter, which is the X, you get to pull that many cards and get a bonus action. So this is very good at sneakily lining up several players at once. Um, and I think, I think that's all, all the professions. So none of these change, all the professions are the same. Um, as in, you don't have to learn all these different symbols and rules for all the different cards. Once you know what all the professions do, you know it. So if we fast forward a little bit, and if we say that I've had my turn here, um, let's have an imaginary turn here. So let's say he's going to go Historian, which means he can pull a card, which would be a good thing to do, because Historian, pull a card from the discard pile, that will get the yellow historian, because we need a set of all five colours, important, back into his, oh, so not sorry, not even back into his hand, that puts it down onto the chapter, so that's good, and let's say we'll do, I don't know, trader for argument's sake, and we won't do an action, end of the turn, these come up here, excellent, done, let's just look over to this guy, I'm going to cards now, so I'm going to use my first action, 
If I've got any colours in my hand that are already down, there's no point in me having them because I can't duplicate the colours. I can't put another colour down, colour and profession down if I've already got it here. Okay. Um, sometimes you can put a card down that isn't a duplicate, but in the process of moving cards around, you end up with the same card up here. If that's the case, you lose the card, unfortunately. No duplicates going up here. Um, so I've lost my track now. So yeah, so um, first action, I'm actually gonna use it to pull some cards. One, two, three, up to six. Okay, done that. Now let's fast forward a little bit. Let's say that I had managed to put more cards down, done the actions and brought them up to the chapters. Let's say I've got a weaver there. I have to cheat, aren't I? Yes, I might have to cheat. I need a green weaver. So let's say we fast forward a little bit, I've got to a point where I have four weavers down. Now apart from being very very good, because if you have four of any one card down, it means you can make the most of what that what that card does because you've got four of them. For my last uh, foot so say for one of my actions I put a weaver down there. Um, I do whatever it says at the top, four. Weavers are awesome. I take any of my cards and put them down, but I've got to take two back from the chapters. We'll skip that because this is what I'm getting to. So at the end of your turn, so always at the end of your turn, anything from your play area then comes up to the to the chapter line. So I have um, a set there, got all five billion. As soon as that set happens, you immediately flip it and you don't get any of those bonuses anymore. That is a complete one. So um, in future turns, or if I had another action left in this turn, what I can then do is spend one of my two actions that you get every turn to score victory points. So if you look at these cards here, they've all got different numbers on, which is uh, obviously the higher the better. Um, and at the top it tells you how many complete chapters you need to convert to get those points. Some cards, for considerably more points, you need two chapters. You want to spend these chapters, if you, if you ever have three complete sets here, you can't get any more, so there's no point in hanging on to them, you might as well use them. But you can also see a lot of them have a bonus action as well at the bottom. Sorry, it's my fault. Um, so this five, you get more richer points, but there's no bonus action at the bottom, whereas the ones like this, you can instantly draw, that little symbol means, from the, from the draw pile, take five cards into your hand. So say for example, I'd say, right, I'm going to, for the second action, I'm going to score this, four victory points, and I get to pull five more cards. One, two, three, four, five-ish. There you go. Um, and that's the game, pretty much. Um, it's another one of those frustrating games where it's easy to tell you the rules in a little uh, clip like this and sort of get across to you that it's quite an easy game to play. Once you start to see the cards work together, um, or once you start to see the actions um, uh, play off against each other, it's a very good game. It's a very good game, it's about half an hour, it doesn't take long to play. Um, and I like the balance of not a lot of rules, but a lot of potential complexity and interesting gameplay, like most of AEG games, to be honest. Um, I think that's about it. I don't think there's anything more to say, really. Um, if there's anything else, obviously I'll put it at the bottom of the video. If I've missed any rules, I'll um, annotate it. Um, oh, actually, there's one more rule. A footnote doesn't really matter uh, as such. But when you do place things into your play area, you get because you get two actions, you can't place the same card twice in one turn with your two actions because you would be a bit uber powerful then wouldn't you really and um, you build those lines a bit too quickly so sorry about that missed that one eh? um yeah so that's about it so um i hope you've enjoyed watching this i hope it's been useful um if you want to come along and say hello on facebook and twitter we are there and um, we've got loads more of these movies on our youtube channel and obviously come along to the store because this is on sale now there um and thank you very much for watching Bye bye